welcome to Powered, Powered by, by magic, magic, where we discuss topics surrounding magic and common or not so common questions. Let's take this journey together. Hi, I'm Tatiana. And I'm Sylvia. And we're coming to you from Eugene, Oregon. We invite you to conjure up a broom and ride with us. So, how are you doing today? Pretty good. I just got a, a package from Backer Kit. If you know about Backerkit, it's usually tied in with Kickstarter, but Backerkit's doing its own Kickstarter thing now. And so I funded it through them, but I got the Alleyman's Oracle Dice. And it is very cool. It comes with a double-sided uh, cloth that has the four seasons on one side, and then it's got past, present, future, and faded on the other side, and comes with 22 dice and a booklet. Or not a booklet, but an actual book book. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's really cool, and the mat is so soft. Mm -hmm. It's very very cool, very soft. And you did a reading for me yesterday, and that I was lovely. I did, I did. It uh, turned out very well. I was very pleased with how it turned out and how it worked, and I have a lot to learn. Mm, yes, there is a lot to learn in that, from what I saw. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. How about you? I'm doing pretty darn good. And I'm enjoying the fact that we have some sunshine, although not looking forward to the extreme heat we're going to be getting the next yeah. couple of days. But I also, I received the Literary Tarot, which was a Kickstarter deck, and I'm excited about that, but haven't used or worked with it much just yet. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful artwork. It's going to take some real uh, learning on my part, mm -hmm. but it has a nice book that goes with it. It's just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And it took quite a while to get here too. It, what, a year and a half? Year was, and a half or two years? Somewhere around like there. Yeah. yeah. It's a very long time. Which is unusual for Kickstarter. Yeah. I don't think I would do that again, I have to say. I, I mean, Kickstarter is really great, so I would probably support again, but it was just, that was insane. Yeah. It was, it was insane. But they kept having trouble with printing and yeah, whatnot yeah. And in China. And it was COVID is most yeah, of the problem. That so. was really the big problem. And then I just ordered the Thistledown Oracle deck, which right? I'm super excited about. I have two of their other decks. That's the, I forget the name of them actually, Tree, the Tree Tarot people. I don't remember. Three Trees. I ah, think that's what it yeah. is. Three Trees are the people who do it and you can find them I think on Etsy if I'm not mistaken I think so they have two other decks that are tarot decks that are great and then they're mm -hmm. going to come out with a third tarot deck after mm. the oracle decks get printed and you know sent out yeah I cannot wait um, I am really <laughs> a big fan of their stuff yeah you've, you've shown me their decks uh, that you have and they're absolutely gorgeous and if you look in our Facebook group you will also see them there yes I try to always label every deck that I use so that when I do a reading you know who it's from and you can find it yourself if you're interested mm -hmm. I like to try to promote all of our wonderful tarot decks people that mm -hmm. we have I'm so grateful to them and I'm house sitting again surprise surprise <laughs> So that is pretty much me in a ball of wax. Mm -hmm. So today we have some exciting questions that we're going to answer. It's our usual Q&A time. Yeah, we, we renamed our Q&As to Magical Minutia, volume dot dot dot. Yep. Today is volume nine. Yeah. So we actually went and counted all of our Q&As. And... Up until now, yeah. Yeah. We're starting here and then we'll number them magical minutia whatever from here on out yeah mm -hmm. yeah all right are emotions beneficial to spell work and if so when and why aha uh -huh. they can be very useful and add power to your working however do not do magic in the heat of the moment you know anger disappointment frustration it can affect your magic in unpredictable ways it is also good to think about your intention and get it to exactly what you want. That takes time and is also hard to do in the moment. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, me being a Leo moon, I would find it very hard to separate my emotions out from doing spell work, although it might be better if I could. Maybe I do it and maybe I don't realize it when I do this, so I'm not sure. 
but I try to be present about it. Yeah. And I, I think I am. Sometimes, you know, I have to stop myself and just make sure I'm in the right headspace. It's important to be balanced when doing spell work. So doing it while angry is a bad idea because there's a good chance you're not as focused as you should be and likely bring in negative energy to the work at hand. It's probably a positive thing if you are in a good mindset, but we can't always be happy. Often we are doing spells because we aren't happy with something. So I guess my answer is kind of the middle of the road. Just be balanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, just, I would caution and say and advise, just be very aware of what your current emotional state of mind state of mind is, yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's something that you can use, then go right ahead. But just be careful what it is you're using, because that might put a negative spin, spin on what you're doing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, completely agree. Is it okay to call upon the elements? Yes, definitely. The elements help our workings and are a part of the world. The problem can come when you do workings with no particular or a fuzzy intention. If you do that, the energy can go almost anywhere from there mm -hmm. because you don't have a clear outlet for the energy. Right. So it's just going to go everywhere. <laughs> and that was her raising her hands and, and making a jazz sign almost. <laughs> Poof. Yes. Poof. Poof. All right. Uh, I feel that calling upon the elements is a vital and traditional part of doing magic when called with specific intention, such as doing ritual or spell crafting, for example. Calling on the elements because you want to see the weather change is questionable in my book. There's too much chance for it to be you know, more harmful than beneficial because you don't know what series of chain reactions might be set off that might not be for the greater good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doing things on a whim is not always advisable. Not only not on a whim, but without, I think, uh, how do I want to put this? Without concentrating for a good intention that is without... I guess, judging that you think you know what is best. Mm -hmm. So doing it for something like weather, again, is outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. And you should really only be doing magic on yourself, for yourself, mm -hmm. in most instances. Yeah. It's not an always, there's never a never, but that's kind of my feel on it. Yeah. Okay. Is there a difference between an intersubjective fiction or an egregore? I'm going to preface this with an intersubjective fiction is a thing that people believe between themselves and they have the same understanding of that thing. Money would be one thing. So we all agree that money has value and power and so on and so forth, but it only has that value and power because we agree that it does. An egregore is a being that comes about from the belief of multiple people that have the same belief or same idea about that particular being. It depends on where you sit on the existence of beings. If you believe they exist, then an egregore is a living being related to, but not exactly, an intersubjective fiction. If you don't believe in beings, then there is little difference at all. Mm hmm Okay, I don't have anything to say on that because I'm not versed in that, but <laughs> thank you for answering that for us. Yeah. Ah, uh, is, uh, is spellcasting for or on someone else without them knowing an acceptable practice? Okay, we've covered this several times before, but it serves repeating in my opinion. I often see this question, or similar, similar, presented on different occult and witchery forums. Doing magic upon request is acceptable in my book, but should not be done without express permission by that person. We never know what is good for another person, even if we think we do. That is our judgment, not specific truth. We just can't know. And that's what I was just saying before. Yeah, yeah. And I have, my thing is, is I don't want to interfere with the free will of another, of, of another being. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Well put. Thank you. When doing a spell for someone, should the requester be involved in the magic? Now, if you do have permission, I just like to say that I highly advise that the 
person is actively a part of the work being done. This can be done by them actually doing the spell you've put together, supplying the ingredients, creating a chant, or, and this is most important piece regardless, is to create the intention and be very specific about its details. Feel that that should be a part of it no matter what. Mm -hmm. But having a person being involved with their own request is so vital. It's yeah. their intention that they need done and their energy needs to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of how I see that one. Okay. When being conscientious about gardening, is there more I can do other than just tending to it and being respectful of it? Now, I believe it's important to say thanks to the plants for all that they do and offer, such as joy and sustenance. Also, it's important to do harvesting, for example, because that moves the natural world along in its normal natural rhythm. And I feel it is necessary to be a part of that. It's great if you can do appropriately with the moon cycle and harvesting period. So I can't remember if it's the end of the moon cycle. That's when you would harvest, I Mm. believe, because the plant has done its full cycle Uh, Um, you know because you some plants do get harvested in the summer so I almost said that you wait until fall to harvest but that's not true of all plants yeah so it's important to consider maybe the moon cycle instead Mm -hmm. and we are part of that balance Uh, we need to be aware of it that it is a bounty and be grateful for it another thought is that you need to be very in tune with your plants not just in asking of the using of them, but also when you're planting them. Listen to see what their conversations are between them. Some plants distinctly do not like to be near another, and this has been proven scientifically as well, and others do. You can hear this on a magical level if you're paying close attention. Their conversations can be very enjoyable or even funny. One way to tell if you're picking up on their lingo is based on your own mood. If you were in a good mood when you started and then are suddenly finding yourself in a bad mood, you may want to check in with what you've been working with in the garden, specifically while planting or weeding. And this also works the other way around as well. Hmm. So talk with your garden. Mm -hmm. Be a part of it. Yeah. When coming into magical power and being noticed for it, how do you rein it in so that you're not a beacon my advice would be shielding and glamours shielding is usually a visualization of a sphere around yourself that you create for yourself that keeps out things or keeps things in as you desire now this is done on the energetic plane a glamour is a seeming the word is usually used in conjunction with fairies and their magic that affects appearance specifically A glamour is much like a shield in that you usually visualize it, but this is to affect your outward appearance or how you seem to be to other people. So shields are for energetic purposes and glamours are for physical purposes. Mm, I like that. Yeah, I like that explanation. Thank you. The best way I can think of this is to learn how to harness your energy so it's not all over the place for starters. Mm Mm-hmm then a little glamour can work wonders if you're really trying to not be seen. That is to say, a form of cloaking or a spell that you can easily put into place in a flash just by thinking of it when you need it. Mm. Now, you could do an actual spell and create a chant to go with it, for example, and then say the chant when needed while out and about. Hmm. Mm-hmm. How do mirrors work within magic? Ooh. I have always felt like mirrors were magical and portals to other places. They can be mirrors to the soul for self-reflection as well, as well as used for scrying and opening portals to other places. I think you and I agree on this quite a bit. I see mirrors as being potential portals and used with that in mind. Uh, They can open doorways and you want to be clear as to what kind of doorway you want to open if you're in fact wanting to do that. Mm -hmm. It's a very delicate matter. And then they can also be reflective in use by looking deeper into the self. For example, if you need to do some scrying to get deeper insight into something that is very useful, it can be very useful. Mm -hmm. 
scrying is a great way to get inner knowledge and insights. Mm. Maybe some people might see things that could portray the future. It's mm-hmm. possible. Just depends on what you believe and what you see. Yeah. What is meditation? Are there different kinds? And what part does focus play in the meditation? Mm. First off, focus is paramount. Meditation is focusing either on emptying your mind or on a specific element. Being a person with ADHD myself, I find meditation very challenging. The reason being is that much of meditation is pretty low key in the energy department and my brain interprets that as boring, quote unquote. So I have to use meditations that are that are actively using attention, like focusing on your breath, watching a candle flame, or meditating on the meaning of a specific something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, meditation is sort of contemplation. There is what we all think of as meditation, which is sitting quietly and allowing visions to come and go, leaving us with information to be considered afterwards. That is the type where your mind is more open and less focused. Then there is the focused meditation, which is, for example, where one is taken on a guided journey to a destination and told that a a specific message will be received and then led back out of that meditation. As you can see, there are focused and then less focused methods. Yeah. So there's lots of different kinds of meditations, almost as many meditations as there are people. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Is there a way to use magic to help with focus? Mm. Well, for me, I guess this is a more practical way of helping with focus. You basically train yourself to associate focus with a particular movement or saying. So when that particular thing is done, either, you know, your movement or your saying, your brain goes, oh, it's focus time. An example would be if you meditated multiple times over several weeks and focused on a candle flame and said a specific phrase like hocus pocus focus. And then at a time where you want that focus, you say hocus pocus focus, and then your brain would pop into that focus mode. It's um, kind of like the, if you know the story about Pavlov's dogs. So Pavlov was a scientist that uh, trained a dog to eat when, or he fed them right after a bell was rung. And then Pretty soon, he found that if he just rung the bell, the dog would salivate as if he were going to get the meal. And so it's kind of that idea. Okay. There are two ways that I can think of. One would be to use a candle uh, scrying as a practice to learn how to focus. I say this because there is a random movement, but you're still focusing on just one item and letting your mind meditate while doing so. You've got a little bit of movement so your mind is kind of that ADHD has something else to work with. It's yeah. changing at the same time, yet you're still focusing. The other requires another person, and that is using dowsing rods to learn how to literally focus your energy. And that is extremely helpful and important in doing magic and useful in the world at large. Magic in and of itself is a focus, and the more you do it, the more I think you can have it rub off on other aspects of your life. Will it replace meds if you need them? I don't think so. So stay in touch with your doctor. (laughs) But I think it can be very helpful to use magic as ways of learning how to train your mind for better focus. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. Is there another way to do visualization when you have an, uh, what is it, aphantasia? Aphantasia. Aphantasia. Why don't you go on from there? Aphantasia is the inability to form mental images of objects that aren't present. If you want to visualize a, an apple, a person with aphantasia would not be able to visualize it without an apple right in front of them. And there are a few things you can do if you have this. Unfortunately, many people with aphantasia also have trouble imagining sounds and feelings if they're not present. You know, feelings as in, like, touch. That brings us to images that are outside of the person. So tarot cards are rich in imagery and meaning and can be one way to empower your magic without having internal visualizations. 
And if you have the ability, you can create your own art. And even if you don't have your, you know, much ability in art, you can still create art and use like colors and shapes and that sort of thing. Do you think you could do collage work as well? Would yeah, collage work would work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Another thing is to have a chant that includes your intentions in it. That is a very powerful way to evoke the feelings that you want without having the ability to visualize. An example might be if you want a simple shield spell to bring out the world card from the tarot and feel that circle, that world around you. It is The world is the protector of many, including yourself, from the cold and radiation of space. Hmm. Thanks for those tips. Yeah. Well, we have wrapped this up very quickly again. Mm -hmm. Our Q&As, I think, are pretty quick. Yeah. Hopefully they're helpful. I, I sure, certainly hope so. Please rate us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever else you found us. I'm Tatiana saying goodbye for now. And I'm Sylvia saying so long and thank you for writing with us. This has been Powered, Powered by, by Magic. Magic. Thank you everybody so much for listening. Thank you. We hope to hear from you.